Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I'm Andy Signor, and Zack Snyder's Justice League trailer dropped today on Valentine's Day, and it's fine. It's fine because, look, we've seen a lot of this stuff already. Let's be honest. We've seen the black-suited Superman. We've seen all this stuff with clips and black-and-white shots and so on and Steppenwolf and Darkseid for so long now that nothing really was surprising except for that Joker part, which we'll talk about. Uh, but what the problem with this whole movie is, trailers, everything, is all the baggage that has come with it. All the drama. And I want to talk about that before I even get to my review because I want to clear some things up. For anybody out there who's been defending me, thank you. And those of you that are coming at me that refuse to listen or actually get the facts straight, this is for you, okay? Now, look, I never said the Snyder Cut didn't exist. In fact, if you go back and actually, here's here are the receipts because I don't delete everything. Uh, December 2019. Baller move. I'm sorry if I ever doubted you or overly criticized you. We don't always have to agree, but watching you stand your own creative in ground is inspiring. Release the Snyder Cut. Now, when I released this, Snyder Army embraced me. They loved me. They're like, oh my God, Andy. And uh, here it was again. It drops evidence. It exists. I made a video because it made me think about my own creative prison I've been stuck in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of people had to, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of haters were on my side. And then it was in April when things turned. Because sources at Warner Brothers told me they confirmed that they weren't going to do Snyder Cut, it wasn't coming to HBO Max, and that they didn't want to work with Zack Snyder anymore. They did not like the Snyder Cut movement. That's what I reported. And I don't understand how any of them or any of you trolls out there don't agree with that, that statement. They hate Warner Brothers. Ray Fisher, everybody hates Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers wanted nothing to do with him. As soon as that was, and, and just to be clear, I, I don't mean to put these guys on blast, Illuminati, they're really good. They get a lot of their sources correct. They had the same sources. They confirmed it. They said my source was correct. Others did too. Uh, a lot of people came forward to defend it um, and said it wasn't the case. It wasn't happening. They can confirm that Andy is indeed correct about the current status. Is Center Cut coming HBO Max. We were informed they could not make any official statement. Yeah, there's no deal in place, yada, yada, yada. Now, this was in April. This was in April of 2020. Now, what happened? HBO Max happened, AT&T took over, Jason Kalar took over. And on May, about a month later, everyone, Zack Snyder included, everybody was, was shocked, speechless, that this happened as fast as it did. One of our best Phantom Wire sources confirmed something's changed today, it's happening. Same source, he found out just as everybody at Warner Brothers found out. Stay tuned, we're trying to understand what, why. I will always man up and correct a story ASAP instead of delete tweets to save like face. And I did it. And then even, you know, so can we have another chat? Woo! -woo. Uh, people were, a lot of people, and I, I want to make sure I put it there. I think I said a lot of people were nice uh, and were supportive. Um, uh, I thought I had it here, but there there was follow-up here. where I, I, didn't, I thought I had it here, but um, a lot of people were actually surprisingly nice about it. They were, they were forgiving, and they said, thanks for correcting the story. It was what it was. The real hatred towards me and this movement came about when I started asking questions about Ray Fisher. And I don't want to get into that whole thing again. I don't want to make it about that. But the reality is there is a toxic fan base. I call them the cult because they're bullies, and no one wants to stand up against them. Zach wants to say they don't exist, and that's made this complicated. It's made the movie less exciting for me. I'll be honest. It has. Um, that coupled with the fact that Ray Fisher refuses to still – drop specifics, it's troubling to me. In fact, I, I actually, I'm, I'm going to do a pivot real quick because I, I want to I want to share this because I think it's important. Because here's Elijah Dushku. Dushku uh, sorry, how do I, Eliza? I thought I had this up. B bear with me. This is important and worth it. Here she is. Here's her statement that she put out there supporting uh, everyone coming out about Joss Whedon on the set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think it's just relevant because here's, my heart aches uh, for, I'm so sorry you had it so long. Your post was powerful. I had known, I won't forget. I frequently think of the saying, we are, sick as our, we, we are as sick as our secrets. Our secrets indeed make and keep us sick. What I'm learning more and more and have personally found most valuable is that profound healing can only come from naming and disclosing what actually happened. The necessary first step, once someone's ready, to freeing ourselves from our secrets, untold truths which have kept us isolated, ashamed, and held hostage. Neglecting to name the power, gender, da-da-da, uh, is an epidemic in our entertainment industry, and for that matter, society in general. Enables them to embolden and ultimately fortifies the systems. May you continue to found solidarity and connection. You've, yada, yada. So look, I want to share this because that's my issue with Ray. And, and bravo to Eliza, Eliza Dushku coming forward to support her friends in this, back them up, 
she wasn't there, but she's backing them up because they named specifics. They shared the story so we can actually react. Just saying one was mean and one did something wrong without telling us what they did wrong is what I've been fighting about Ray. And then Ray came about me personally and when he says he doesn't he doesn't follow the hate or the bullies and then he he put out slander against me and Jody. That's that's why all that became what it is. So a lot of people are mad at me because I've been leading that story, but I don't like the way he's handled it. I think he's made things messier for this movement. Let's be honest. He has. He's turned a lot of people off because of just never telling us what it is and then using Buffy's take Buffy's cast takedown as if they were there at the Justice League, which they weren't. Now, if something happened, tell us, and I will correct it just as I corrected here. I will always correct my reports, but until then, I'm never going to cancel and join a mob and just cancel somebody and condemn them and have them fire and lose everything because a celebrity tells me to. So I will listen, but I will always listen to the other side, and until there's some sort of proof or specifics that makes me make my own decision, I'm not going to do it. Now, Charisma Carpenter helped me feel different about Joss Whedon. I'll be honest, the cast of Buffy has made me feel different about Joss Whedon because they were brave. They came forward in solidarity as a cast and supported Charisma Carpenter's accusations without question. It wasn't a, there was no vagueness. There wasn't any of that. So that's the, that's my beef. So, but because I came out and questioned it, now it's like, I hate Zach. I hate this. I've never said I hated Zach. Only time I've criticized Zach is when he says there wasn't a toxic fan. There is no toxic fan base. So that's the, that's the, yeah, have all that. That's, that's the backstory to everything. Um, we corrected the story. I've always corrected my stories. As soon as we knew, I, we, we at Phantom Wire removed that other story. I didn't remove my tweets, but we removed the story to, and had it correct to say it was happening because I didn't want the misinformation or false news out there. Uh, and as I even said in this article, many in the in this fan base, uh, while some Tox fans took the battle, uh, impressed with many of the fans today who have already started forgiving us after correcting the story. And I want to make it clear there are good Snyder fans out there. Uh, so with all of that said, with all of that put out there, the, the, the problem is this movie, whether you're excited or not, this movie comes with all that baggage. And uh, it does it does hamper the release. And I think it will hamper the release for a lot of people, if I'm being honest. So at the end of the day, my trailer reaction is this. It's fine. I say it again. It's fine. Nothing in it like gets me as charged as uh, clearly a lot of fans out there are. Good for them. Uh, overall, like the sweeping score is cool. It's nice to see this shot of Superman is badass. I don't like the IMAX format. If I have to watch IMAX format at home, I'm going to be bummed because it's going to be like watching old four to three ratio, like VHS tapes with the, all the, the bars on the side. I understand he made it cinematic and that's what he shot it in and it sucks. But at home, we don't have square TVs anymore. We have rectangular TVs. So that's that's going to be a bummer because even though they're going 4K, you're going to get half of your screen filled. That is that really how the movie's coming out like this? Because I, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's It was frustrating. Like, where's the rest of the movie? He filled it up and, you know, it's supposed to be so big that it looks like that on the big screen, but we don't have that screen and now it's streaming. So it's sadly where we're stuck. But yeah, I mean, look, looks cool. This shot was cool. I, that's Zack Snyder in a nutshell. It looks cool. Like a lot of his stuff does look cool. Will the story be good? Will it be better than the other two? Which personally I wasn't a fan of. I've never hid that. Um, I didn't like his take on Superman. I feel like he, he messed up Superman. He did his own thing and he pleased some fans. He just didn't please me. We're allowed to have disagreements. Uh, here, more more destruction, everything, we're back there. Uh, and then he's had a night. Now we get to see this. Honestly, this part intrigues me the most because we didn't get to see a lot of it and it didn't make any damn sense in Whedon's cut. The whole doomsday uh, or nightmare scenario, uh, I'm into that. I, I wish the whole movie was this, if I'm being perfectly honest. That would have been a more interesting movie to me. Um, but, you know, we've seen this shot. We've seen this shot. Uh, all, a lot of this stuff we've seen. Steppenwolf. Still looks CGI to me. I'm sorry. It doesn't look... Everyone's like losing their mind over the new look. I, I guess it's better. Um, CGI battles. Okay, I've seen stuff like this before. I still don't understand the big deal. Okay, here we have Batman building a team. Aquaman swimming around. Yeah, it's fine. These are big characters that I should be excited for. But the reality is we know what these characters are. We've seen them in BVS and other movies. There's no surprises anymore. It's just going to be a different version of the story we've already seen. Uh, this shot with the, with the, with the, why, what, what? It's such a weird, like, again, one of those like overly stylized cool shots again, because I guess we got to remember that awful, awful moment in Man of Steel where his dad dies in the hurricane. <laughs> I'm sorry. Terrible, terrible moment in a movie. Uh, 
And uh, Diane Lane scenes in that movie, amazing in Man of Steel. Parts of Man of Steel I've come to really appreciate. Uh, but of course, oh, we got him with his shirt off again. Woo woo! I'm excited for that. Uh, here he is in the suit. We get to see it fully. Some some cyborg. Some people flying around. I can't play the scene because they don't. Uh, here's Billy Crudup again, who I like. Um, as his dad, a lot more, you know, scene. I like the scene where Flash saves uh, Iris. Look, that looks like a good addition that should have been in a movie. Uh, and overall, you know, it's there. It's fine. The scene at the end. Now we got to talk about this scene at the end. And I think I have a, I think I have the uh, full shot here. Here it is, the, uh, the GIF version. We live in a society where honor is a distant memory. Isn't that right, Batman? Now look. Sure seems better than the Suicide Squad damage version. I'll give him that. Jared Leto does look better. But like this line, the using we live in a society, I can't tell if he's trolling us or if that's just, he really did it. I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he's trolling us. Like, because you, you can't have Joker now use we in a society, we live in a society which has become its own, own meme and its own thing. You can't do that unless you're doing it tongue in cheek. But to me, it's like, is that cool? Or is that just, hey, F you, everybody? It is, it is to me, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that's brilliant trollery happening right now. But it also is sort of, to me, admits how crappy this Joker is. Because, we, I don't know, I don't think he actually should say it. But it's a whole debate online that we're going to have for a while. Of but bravo and kudos to him because it did av absolutely... Made, made made everyone on the internet. And I see a lot of his critics even going, "All right, touche, Zack Snyder." That one that one felt entirely uh, uh, to sort of distract and make everybody think like, "Is he trolling us?" Uh, it, well, well, all right. So I, I give that part props. It's distracted me from a lot of it because I've been debating and re going back to like figure out what does the meme really mean, which you can guys can go do, you can go look it up. But overall, look, it's fine. It's fine. I don't have a problem with the movie. I, I have a problem with some of the fans, some of the fans, and I wish Ray Fisher would stop stretching things out and tell us the truth. Uh, that's my, and I wish there wasn't so much baggage still associated with this from the toxicity of the fans. I wish Zach would have just called them out and said, look, we're just excited for the film. We know so many of you are. We don't want to focus on the hate side. It comes both ways. Uh, of course, we don't endorse the hate stuff. We're, this is a movie that is built out of love and we're looking excited to do it. That's all I've wanting from him forever. And instead it feels like he just wants to continue to enjoy the, the anger and the hate out there, which is, there's a lot, Zach. I know you know there is. So that's what this is all about. So my reaction to the trailers is it's complicated, right? Because the movie itself is complicated. So yeah, I'm going to review the movie in March. I'm going to see it. I'm going to give it more. Obviously, then we'll see the story and everything else differently and figure out if it's a good movie. Uh, and that point we'll talk. But I, all this baggage, all this stuff I thought was important to address and make sure we put out there so I can direct people to the facts of me before watching this movie. This is my, that's my reaction to everything with all the baggage included. And my background, which I, everyone, be honest about. Never said it didn't exist. I said Warner Brothers didn't want it, which was true. AT&T overruled them. I corrected my story. We're here where we are. Ray Fisher, whole separate issue. Shouldn't be related to whether this movie's or not. Uh, but people, obviously, anything you do against Zach or his friends, you're an enemy, is how a lot of them treat it. So that's where we're stuck. What do you guys think of the trailer? Did you like it? Uh, some super cool Superman shots, I will say. But... Will the movie be good? Still yet to be cited. A trailer can't decide whether a movie is good or not. It can excite the fan base, clearly. Uh, the only thing I do want to mention, actually, that I, I thought I had it up here, I, I do want to say, where's the outrage at Jason Kalar? Why does he get to... Why does he get to get credit for all this? Fans are really going to enjoy the trailer. Fun to see the response of the next one. So he, he wants to have the good, but then he doesn't want to really call out Ray, and Ray doesn't want to call him out, even though... He's in charge of your investigation, Ray. You're so con consumed by Walter Hamada. But shouldn't Jason Kalar ultimately be the guy in charge of everything? Why are Snyder fans, Ray Fisher, you know, cy cyborg, fan Borg life, why are they cool with him? I don't get it. I understand a lot of you canceling the movie would be stupid. You want to watch the movie you've gotten to this point. But why are you letting Jason Kalar get all this love? Because I don't even know if he's the one who made the movie choice. He's clearly was part of it. But he, that all, he also made the choice to let the investigation go away. 
But everyone just wants to blame Hamada. If, if, if there really something went down, you don't think Kalar saw those reports? Why do we let this apart? I, double standard here by, by no stretch of the imagination. Where's the outrage with him? Why aren't people doing it? And you go search about it. And uh, thank you. Thank you for giving this fans this amazing experience. So much. Wait, wait, can we get the movie? Thank you. We're getting, finally getting the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You helped make this possible. You believed in Zach. But he doesn't believe in Ray. Why aren't you outraged at him? Tell me down below. Before you do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a comment. Smash that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet.